Google Trends is the best free tool to help you understand what the world is searching for at any moment in time. This can give you product ideas, keyword ideas, content ideas, and more. It's one of my favorite free market research tools. So let's jump in. First, you start by going to trends.google.com. Now I'm going to use this as a research tool, but if you have a newsletter where you're constantly putting out the hottest topics and the things that are breaking news right here and now, go under the trending now. It's got the last day. You can even break it down to the past 24 hours and you can see what the most searched phrases and topics are in a very short period of time. But from the home page, what I personally like to do is simply enter a keyword or a topic idea in this main search bar right here. So let me start with vegan diet. Now you can see right here that it gives me two options. There's vegan diet, the search term and vegan diets, the topic personally, as a search engine marketer, I want to focus on the search term itself. Now the default is to the United States only. This might be because I'm in the U S so I'm going to toggle that to worldwide. And then it defaults me to the past day. So that graph is a 24 hour graph. I would like more data to see a longer term trend. And here you can see clear as day that over the last five years, the interest in veganism continues to decline with a few spikes. Now I'm going to explain how to read and interpret the data of this graph in a second, but I want to show you a little bit more information that's available to you here that can help you as a niche marketer. So first you get to see where has the most interest in this topic. Interestingly, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland are the top four. The U S is in the top five below that you get the related topics, but you also get related queries. Okay. So related topics are things you can use to create products or even to niche down if you're trying to find what your niche is. So raw veganism, for example, is one of those breakout related topics that shows you that a subset of people who are interested in veganism are also interested in raw veganism. And this could help you come up with a mini course, an e-class, uh, an ebook, a cookbook and on and on. So that's how you can get kind of product ideas from this on the related query side. These are actual keyword phrases that people are searching. And this is stuff that you can make blog posts and videos on. For example, why is diet Pepsi not vegan? Now this is news to me. I'm using a random example here. Um, but that is one of those kind of clever creative ideas that would absolutely get the click. It would get clicks on Facebook. If you share your YouTube video that you made on Facebook, it would get clicks on Pinterest. If you share your blog post on Pinterest. So these are the kinds of topics that it might make sense for you to go create long form content on. And I want you to notice there's several of them, right? They go, farther into the different queries that are available. And this is how you can use Google trends as a free keyword research tool. But the real power is when you start to compare different options and different ideas against each other. So you can see what your marketplace values and looks for most right here and now. So let me add carnivore diet to this to give us a contrasting idea in here. Now the vegan diet and the carnivore diet could not be any more different in how one would approach, uh, well-being and health through food. And you can see clearly right here in this five year graph worldwide, that veganism is trending down and the carnivore diet is trending up in a major way. So if I was currently uh, creating a seven day weight loss boot camp, if I was creating some sort of a health based brand, and I was wanting to make sure that the diet recommendations I had were in alignment with what is gaining in popularity. So the content, the YouTube videos, the blog posts I create today will still be relevant in three, four, five, six months, or even potentially years. This graph shows me that one of these topics is going up and one of these topics is going down. I'm going to add another one, the keto diet here, just to give us a third comparison. And this goes to show how big of a trend the keto diet was back in 2019. Now let's talk about reading the data from this graph a little bit. So this is a relative graph that shows the interest over time. So right here, we have the 100 mark on this top line and this point, which my mouse will not hover on for us here on video. Um, this point right here back in about February, early March of 2019 was the highest point search of all times for all of these phrases. Okay. You can see it right there, March 3rd through 9th, more people search keto diet than any of these phrases at any other time in the last 
five years. Now, the using keto or adding keto kind of blows out this graph. So I'm just going to remove that so we can look at a graph that's a little bit more similar. And now we can see from this graph, the highest point of searches for carnivore diet was right at December 31st through January 6th. This to me says that people are making those uh, New Year's resolutions and they're resolving to change their diet and to change their habits into the new year. And this past year, as we entered 2024, a lot more people, over double as many people it seems, searched from carnivore diet instead of searching the vegan diet. And this is one of the really powerful ways for you to know what's trending. Let's run another little sample to give us another example to play with here. So here I have added in HIT workout, which is high intensity interval training and body weight workout. So again, I'm thinking as if I'm building a weight loss brand and I need to figure out what diets I'm going to recommend and talk about it. And I need to figure out what workout routines I need to create and recommend people look at. Looking at these two things here, I can see that the HIT workout is definitely searched more often because the blue line, which is HIT workout, is higher than the red line, which is body weight workout. And this is in the past five years worldwide. If you want to sub niche down and see like the United States, you can toggle your location here and you can see clearly that it's about the same type of data information. Once again, you can scroll down, you can see the different states that have the different search volume, but then you can also look at the different topics and queries associated. Now this tells me Sydney Cummings hit workout. Now I personally don't know much about the hit workout. I don't know who this is, but as a marketer, if I was looking for affiliate marketing partners, people who have products and courses that I could go recommend that I know are popular, that I know sell well, this is a really smart way for me to start looking into the people I could potentially partner with as an affiliate. And the same is true for the body weight workout here. You can see the different related queries. And you notice when you get down here, you don't actually see the different topics. So I'm going to remove the body weight workout and we're going to now see the subtopics down below to understand what some of these other ideas are. And here we have the related topics. So a 30 minute topic, the dumbbell hit workout, bingo. So maybe I think the hit niche is too broad of a niche. And I want to really help people understand a smaller subset of that niche. So I could go into the dumbbell hit workout topic. I could go into cardio for weight loss. And there's just plenty of different ideas that I can use to research. For example, when I find Pamela Reef, who's a YouTuber, I can now go look at their channel. I can go look at their most popular videos. I can look at their videos that have the most views to understand what content is trending that I then would want to go create variations of. And of course, over here on the right, we have those search queries as well. Then from a market's perspective. So let's say you want to compare two markets to see which market deserves more of your time, attention, or money to invest in. Let's run in a query for that. So first and foremost, we can search Bitcoin. And right now in early February of 2024, we're sitting at about $50,000 per Bitcoin, which is just a little bit below all time highs. But you can see right here that the search volume is nowhere near all time highs. So if one person was wondering, hey, is everybody already in on Bitcoin? Did I miss the boat on Bitcoin? This is a sentiment graph that will give you interest. And you can see back in the major double top peak of 2021, these were the highest searches of all times for the phrase Bitcoin on Google. Now, obviously, this is not investing advice at, at all by any means, but I'm trying to help you understand that we can now look at something that's going on in the real world, the price and adoption rate of Bitcoin. And we can ask ourselves at $50,000 per Bitcoin right now, is this the top? Have I missed the move? And looking at these numbers, it really is a kind of an interesting thought. But let's compare Bitcoin to a couple of the other common cryptocurrencies to see how they look. And when I add Ethereum and Solana to the graph, you can see clearly that the king of search for all cryptocurrencies here is by far Bitcoin. Um, Ethereum and Solana are uh, tiny in comparison to it. They, they barely register on the graph, whereas Bitcoin takes all of the search um, information. This could help one understand maybe a uh, portfolio allocation type questions, but really it's just the best way for you to get some sentiment understanding of what is being most commonly searched. And I did change this over to the United States on the last example. So let's flip it back to worldwide and make sure that 
it still looks the same and there it is and so it does. So this is kind of one of the more interesting ways and let's say you decide that you're gonna run a portfolio and you've got 70% uh, or 80% Bitcoin and you wanna add 20% of higher risk things. Well, you can start to search through Ethereum Solana to see, wow, back in 2021, Ethereum was getting all of the market share attention. But at this point in time, it actually looks like they are pretty close. So I want to zoom in on that section. So I'm going to go here into the past 12 months only. Now we're looking at the past 12 months and I can see that there was a point here at the end of 2023 where Solana actually had higher search volume than Ethereum did. This is an amazing insight that if people are stuck in their echo chambers, if people are just looking at crypto Twitter and they're not zooming out to see what the mass populations are looking at, this graph here kind of shows me that the Ethereum is flat, possibly down, whereas the Solana search graph is going up and up. And obviously, the assumption that I'm alluding to here is as more people gain interest in a specific cryptocurrency, theoretically, more people are going to purchase that cryptocurrency. Theoretically, that's more demand and the similar or less supply. Therefore, that's number go up technology in order. But what you've seen here is a few different ways to use Google Trends. Now, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up to like this video, leave me a comment if you enjoyed this video, and that's going to help the YouTube algorithm assist this video in trending so I can help other folks like you who are wanting to learn how to find great keywords with a free keyword research tool. They're going to want to learn how to find those trending topics that they can talk about in their emails, in their social media content, and ultimately find that lovely little sub niche that has an underserved audience where you can go create content, products, a brand and a business. And this one tool right here may very well be your secret weapon. I hope you've enjoyed this Google Trends tutorial. I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. And until we meet again, be well.